My name is Sarah Tynan. I am a citizen of the United States of America. Here's my passport. I hold a PhD in geography from University of Colorado Boulder, and I conducted dissertation fieldwork in Xinjiang, China from 2014 to 2017. And here is my video testimony for the Uyghur Pulse Project uh, for October 2019. As a child, the exoticism of the Silk Road fascinated me. As an adult, I conducted field work in the capital city of Xinjiang, Urumqi. It's a city near the ancient Silk Road, a desert region with a string of oases that once connected traders between China and Europe. The area is known today as Xinjiang, a province on the northwest border of China in Tibet, but Muslim. Now, when I first arrived in China, uh, which was back in 20, 2009, Han Chinese people told me, Xinjiang is dangerous, full of Uyghur terrorists who will stick you with a syringe full of HIV. At the time, I was skeptical, but I never did make it back to Xinjiang until five years later in 2014. When I first began researching the region, at that time, 2014, I wanted to better understand what it means to live as a minority Uyghur in Xinjiang today. You see, Xinjiang has both Han Chinese and Uyghur people living there. The Han Chinese people are the people you would see in Chinese movies, and the Uyghurs are Turkish. Uh, you can kind of think of it as the Uyghurs are to China as Native Americans are to the U.S. It's an imperfect analogy, but it'll give you a good idea. So I undertook this research. I wanted to better understand uh, how and why that territory was understood as China today, but there were other people living there who disagreed with that feeling. So I lived in the capital city for two years. I learned Uyghur, and I lived, dined, laughed, and cried with my Uyghur neighbor. And what I found, uh, mostly between 2014 and 2016, was heartbreaking. Life was increasingly defined by police surveillance and discrimination, especially of poor Uyghurs, who were more likely to get picked up for small offenses like not carrying ID. This had been going on for years, but in 2017, I witnessed policing that increased dramatically. My friends started disappearing. A dear friend told me once, we are all just waiting for the knock on our door. Now, two years later, we have a uh, ample evidence, including satellite images of large internment camps, that the Chinese government holds more than one million Uyghurs without trial. And why? Because many people still see Uyghurs as dangerous. And why do they see them as dangerous? Because they are poor. They are Muslim, and they look different from the majority Han Chinese. The Uyghurs just don't fit into the Chinese vision of a homogenous nation state. And what happens when a group of people don't fit into the vision of the people in power? The people in power make room for the people who do fit into their program by incarcerating those who do not. I believe a more just and inclusive world is possible if we connect with these so-called dangerous people like Uyghurs, and dangerous places like Xinjiang. We connect with them rather than avoid them, and we listen to their stories rather than silence them. The story is not so different in our own country, the United States of America. Thank you very much, and if you have any questions about any of the research I conducted, there is a link to my website in the description of this video and a link to my Google Scholar page.
feel free to reach out with any questions.